Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. It's going to be HDEF on both of them, because as you can see, I'm not in my studio. But I've been bombarded with uh, people requesting that I get to this Trump issue, um, which is basically all-out cheating. So I am going to go ahead and cover that and a couple of other things here quickly. Uh, this is by Patrick Buchanan. It's from WND.com. You guys don't have to be quiet. If you guys hear noise behind me, uh, look, any other host wouldn't have even done a show. I'm doing a show just to be nice, so you might hear me. It happens. In the race for the Republican nomination, and this is WND.com, Donald Trump would seem to be in the catbird seat. Of course, he's won the most states, and he has beat um, all of the other candidates by over 2 million votes, and that cannot be overstressed. He has brought out the largest crowds and in in is poised for huge wins. However, uh, backroom boys, as it says, are looking to steal the nomination from him at a brokered convention in Cleveland. And I am, uh, I should say, the correct views is uh, we have applied and we are in the running for uh, the GOP convention independent media pass. So root for us and uh, let, let it be known that you want us in that and... Uh, Hey, you saw my you saw my Trump coverage. You've seen my Bilderberg coverage. Uh, I work very hard. I'm not bragging, but my my track record speaks for itself, friends. I'm gonna do a really good job with this. Um, over the weekend, Colorado it says awarded awarded excuse me all 34 delegates to Ted Cruz, and the fix has been in since August when party officials, alarmed at Trump's popularity, decided that it would be best if Colorado Republicans were not allowed to vote at all. And uh, it happened after the South Carolina sweep that we covered here. They're also saying that it costs too much to count all the, all the ballots. They're saying that they're worried that too many people are going to vote. Now, this is almost like the Dunce Cap of the Month award show here, in that you have the GOP, which has not been on a winning trajectory as of late, moving in and saying, we don't like that so many people now care about our party, thanks to Mr. Trump. So we're going to cut costs by eliminating an entire state's right to have a voice. Now, I know Rush Limbaugh, who is incredibly wrong here, was saying that that is simply the rules of the Republican Party and that the Republicans in Colorado are meant to know these things, expected to know these things. Let me tell you something, Rush. If you steal something from somebody, or if you rig something in such a way that you didn't really break anything but the spirit of the law, but not the actual law, for those of you that don't know what I mean, you're like in an ambiguity land here, the GOP is legally allowed to run their organization any way they want. But they're somehow missing that they're going to drive voters away in droves by doing this. Uh, there's a protest. It's planned for Friday. And if you're anywhere in Colorado, I suggest you go. It's at the GOP headquarters. And it's uh, following the news that all of the state's delegates were awarded to Republican presidential candidate Ted Cruz without any say. That'd be none for you Usher fans. Say from voters. It says the Colorado Republican Party shamefully silenced its voters this election. And uh, it's according to the uh, the march that's going to be coming there. <sighs> Republican Party, take note, a man says as he burns his Republican card. Um, he sets fire to this forum in his kitchen and says, I think we're going to see a whole lot of these. I've been a Republican all my life and I will never be a Republican again. Um... This is interesting because you're going to see an awful lot of this. Um, I, for one, um, they cheated Ron Paul last time by instituting what is known as Rule 40, which prevented a nomination from the floor because they tried to prevent Ron Paul from getting his votes that he earned. Well, now they're doing the exact opposite. They removed Rule, rule 40 and that's so that they can allow someone to be nominated from the floor which would prevent Trump from getting the votes that he did earn. It's the exact opposite of what they did four years ago. And this is why I tell people on a regular basis that even though I've never once voted Democrat and don't see myself doing it, I am not a Republican. I will bend that far for people like Rand Paul, Ron Paul, uh, Gary Johnson when he was a uh, Republican. Um, 
not so much otherwise. Um, many regular listeners know that I'm no huge fan of Trump's view on the Fourth Amendment, for instance. Where it says, a court, Kit Daniels' prison planet, the GOP establishment sees themselves as part of a specialized class responsible for making political decisions because they believe the public's too stupid to make their own decisions. The spectator democracy, he writes, first described by political insider Walt Lippmann in the 1920s, reduces voters to mere spectators, not participants, in the public policy managing of the tiny elite, that in this case would be the GOP establishment. The compelling moral principle behind it is that the mass of the public are just too stupid to be able to understand things. This is from Noam Chomsky, and he wrote this describing Lippmann's views. Noam Chomsky, again, more of a Sanders than a Trump, but the point is here that both sides are being equally cheated. The The Democrats are out there saying, well, we still have a, uh, an actual primary in Colorado, so look how much better we are than the Republicans. Never mind the fact that they have what's called superdelegates, which have uh, pretty much given Hillary the nomination before Sanders even ran. So no, they're not better. The public at large, on the other hand, cannot manage their affairs, so they must be led like cattle towards a future that is envisioned by those who are in control. Not considered the decision makers, the American people are meant to be mere bystanders in society, only participating on occasion during political elections to decide which one of the elites will represent them, in this case, Hillary or Ted. Um, Populist candidates like Donald Trump are not allowed to run. So this is what they do. They draw up straw man arguments to declare falsely that Trump is racist, and it encourages infighting among the public. But meanwhile, the establishment steals the entire vote. And uh, we've seen this time and time again. Uh, I, somewhere around here is serenity of passing time. There's a little gathering where we are. Uh, that's why I'm doing it, not in the studio. Uh, Serenity, would you vote for Ted Cruz if they steal him away and if they if they steal Trump away? No. No, absolutely not. I and many other people here are going to. I'm going to say this on air. If they steal Trump, I will not vote for Republican, even if they pick someone I like. That would include Judge Napolitano and Justin Amish, and I've never said that before. Justin Amish is my favorite politician since Ron Paul retired. I will not even support Justin Amish if they still Trump. I'll vote third party. At this point, that's probably Gary Johnson, which we'll get to in a minute. It could also be John McAfee. If they're smart, it will be Johnson McAfee. But um, I want to do one more thing before we bail out of this Trump talk here. Colorado GOP leader to disgruntled Trump supporter. He says, go ahead and burn down the party, Gateway Pundit. This has to be the worst leader ever elected to a party that I've ever heard of. Listen to this. This came in the email today, uh, the author writes, from James, a disgruntled Colorado Republican voter after the primary elites gave all of the state's delegates to Senator Ted Cruz. Lion Ted. On Saturday, Ted Cruz supporters took all 13 of the delegates up for grabs at the Colorado GOP convention to complete a sweep of the state. A sweep. Nobody voted. He swept it. Uh, it says it wasn't without controversy. Needless to say, it wasn't without controversy. I hate when writers put just the stupidest sentences in their articles. From James, included in the letter, he, write, I, he writes um, to the GOP and all of its stooges, I guess you haven't learned your lesson. You saw what we did to the state Senate president who betrayed us and voted for an anti-Second Amendment bills. We recalled her. So what do you think we're going to do to you for selling us out in the never-Trump cabal? Let me be adamantly clear that there is no mistake. We will burn the whole fucking party to the ground on election day. We will do one of three things. Stay home, vote third party, that'd be me. Ones who don't have a chance of winning, but could you use the, uh, the I'll tell you why it's important in a minute. Or cast our lot for the despicable Democrats. I'd, I'd rather be castrated. That I won't be doing. So... He says, so you now have a choice. Invalidate the caucus, that would be Colorado's cheating, held over the weekend, or hold a fair caucus, or face our wrath in November. Go ahead and cross our path at your own peril. You know we are pissed off already by the share of votes Donald Trump has received in the primary elections held until this point. 
Think long and think hard. Ask yourselves, is it worth destroying our entire party for over a decade and suffering a loss from which we may never recover? Or is it better to listen to the voters and not the rhinos? That, of course, is Republican in name only. He writes, uh, P.S., he's 53 years old, blah, blah, blah. P.S., I, didn't, I did support Ted Cruz until he screwed Chris McDaniel in Mississippi. True. Sold us out by championing the TPP, which is the worst trade, again, worst trade agreement ever. And gave Obama the okay to negotiate with Iran, uh, which, of course, is setting us up for a nuclear disaster such as never seen, which is what happens when you build a nuke plant on a fault line. Or is it better to listen to the voters? Um, and, and, and he was a uh, dishonest campaign, which he did. He cheated Ben Carson. So listen what Steve House replies. This is a man, I'm telling you, I, if you said this at your job, would you still have a job? James. Thank you for blah, 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 blah. Go ahead and burn the party down if that's what it takes to put this country on the right track. At this point, I'm open to anything. Uh, what happened over the weekend was simple and it had no manipulation or underhanded process in it. No, you just make the entire election process so busy that your average working man can't possibly know what it's doing and then spring it on them on election day, Steve. Why would they be mad? You didn't cheat. You just made the rules so complicated that only you could win. That's not cheating. We love you, Steve. The Cruz campaign worked harder than anyone else over a longer period, using the process that we have to create a victory for him. That's not what he meant, but that is what they did. They created a victory for him. What great words he has chosen. He came to Colorado and was the only candidate who did. He gave a great speech and won. Well, that was because your average person in Colorado thought they were going to get a vote. I would have been perfectly okay with the result being for Mr. Trump had he done with his team the same thing. And I will support whoever wins without hesitation. Yeah, well, many of us won't, jerk. But blaming other people when you don't get what you want is only relevant if you did the work honestly. Honestly, yeah, like there's honesty to be found in Colorado today. The team think we are up. I think the people are upset right now because they don't like the process and don't understand it. No. I am one of those people who doesn't like it. It's complicated, and many don't understand why we don't just have a national primary across all 50 states in June, pick the winner, and go after the Democrats then in the general election. There are complications with that as well, he writes, but it comes down to states' rights and how we pick the candidates. So he was smart enough to say that he himself didn't like it, but that's hardly a uh, saving uh, life vest for him with a problem this big. He writes, lastly, one more thing I do not get from the Trump supporters who are mad at me right now is why so many of them believe that he isn't going to win. Well, you've cheated him in a number of states. That would be a hint. I think Mr. Trump has woken America up, and we should be thankful for that. Yes, you should be thankful for that, but you're not. Why do you think he isn't going to win? He doesn't even put in a question mark on it. Because you have cheated him in a number of states. Second time I'll answer that for you. Keep asking. He has a big lead, which you are stealing from him, the easiest path to the nomination, which you are going to try to steal from him in Cleveland, and leads in critical states like New York, California, etc., which you are going to probably try to cheat him out of there as well. Channel your energy into getting your guy elected, which we are doing by showing outrage, and at the end, a really manipulation happens in light of a match. Let me tell you what's going to happen here. I'm going to make this prediction right now. Trump who I have found to be an honest man, has said that he will not run third party unless he was cheated. He wanted to be treated fairly. He has not been treated fairly. He's been treated like a boob. So I see him running third party. That doesn't break the pledge. It simply does not break the pledge. Um, and there's another thing I'm predicting besides him running third party if they cheat him out of this is the rise of Gary Johnson. And let me tell you why voting third party doesn't matter. Because I can already... I never voted third party. It doesn't matter. Let me tell you why it would matter. Is Gary Johnson going to win? Probably not. But here's why it matters. If you can get the third party candidate, whoever it would be, up to at least 5% of the vote, of which Gary Johnson, uh, Johnson and Gray last time got one, if they can get 5% of the vote then they'll get what's called federal matching funds. And there's a chance then that the popularity could go so big that in 2020, for that election, we could actually see a third party on stage, which we haven't since Ross Perot. 
And it's important as we talk about cheating to keep an eye on this because you can look this up if you think I'm nuts. Mere days, put uh, Gary Johnson polling at 10% in Ohio, and then remarkably on election day he got 1%. Now how do you lose 9% of your votes without a scandal two days before the election? That doesn't happen. Uh, but anyway, Washington Times... Poll shows Gary Johnson in double digits in three-way race against Clinton and Trump. In other words, he is spanking ass is what it's saying. Libertarian presidential hope for Gary Johnson possibly benefiting from dissatisfaction with the two major parties, frontrunners, is in double digits in a potential three-way race, said Thursday. Now, if Donald Trump does, which I predict, if he gets cheated, run third party, he may as well just shoot poor Gary Johnson because he'd have just as much chance of getting his 5%. But if he doesn't do that, and this is a little bit interesting here, because if you're looking at a third party getting double digits, then in 2020 you most likely will have three parties on that debate stage that November. So don't tell me that voting third party doesn't count because I swear I gonna I will reach through this camera and choke you if you tell me that. In a three-way contest, Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton was at 42%, GOP frontrunner Donald Trump at 34, and Mr. Johnson, and I don't believe that at all. I think Trump is going to destroy Clinton in the debates. What's she going to run on? The fact that she destroyed Libya? Um, there's not much to get her elected here. So in the debates, I look for Trump's numbers to go up. But uh, Gary Johnson polled at 11%. That is huge. More than three-quarters of respondents didn't know enough about Mr. Johnson, the former New Mexico governor and 2012 presidential candidate but were more than happy to vote for somebody pretty much that wasn't uh, Hillary or Cruz or Trump, as it were. But let me tell you this. I can tell you one thing about Gary Johnson. He was a remarkable governor in New Mexico, and they saw that they had a surplus when he left office. So, I mean, he did an excellent job. Guys, three stories to get to jumping off here. I want to remind you about StickerJunkie.com, um, S-T-I-C-K-E-R, Junkie is J-U-N-K-I-E. Um, you're going to get amazing stickers. They're going to be stickers that you're satisfied with. And on checkout, make sure you type in correct views or the correct views, and you'll find out that you're getting a savings just because you're listening to the show. That's how cool David Lake is at Sticker Junkie. All right, guys, um, this is a bit of a science news. I only got one of these tonight. Daily Mail, would you live in an inflatable home on Mars? NASA plans to test the expandable house on the International Space Station ahead of a mission to the Red Planet. Um, that's interesting because life on Mars has been imagined in various guises throughout um, movies and fantasy, and we haven't even established exactly how to get there. That's why I doubled that up before you started, by the way. Uh -huh. It hasn't stopped NASA working on ways to transport large houses and buildings to the Red Planet. The agency believes that the future of neighborhoods on Mars is inflatable homes, and it plans to match and test the expandable habitat on the International Space Station next month. Now, the good thing about this here is that, and I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass, it's that you're going to have a chance to really enjoy the way that they're trying to do this. They found that rather than bring all this food and all these houses and the rockets and everything needed, it's easier to bring the provisions, the food, the houses, have them set up by either a small crew or um, have them set up mechanically. And then when the people arrive at Mars, they can go straight to work. Their house is up, their food is up, their provisions are met. They can actually focus on what it is they're doing. Uh, the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, or BEAM, will be the first inflatable habitat to ever be attached to the space station. And uh, BEAM is scheduled to launch on the 8th SpaceX Commercial Resupply Service mission due to take off on April 8th. This is happening, by the way, without NASA. SpaceX is eon flux, so this is even more interesting. Um, expandables like beam, also called inflatables, are ideal because they are lightweight and take up minimal space on a rocket. They expand after being deployed in space and potentially provide a comfortable area for astronauts to live and work. The journey to Mars is complex and filled with challenges, no shit. And NASA and its partners are continuously working to solve them. So look it up, friends. There's pictures of it online. I'm not going to read the whole thing and have you uh, just tune out on me here. 
but they are relatively compact, 5.7 feet long and uh, 7.5 feet in diameter. When it's attached to the station's structure and inflated, it'll expand to 12 feet long and 10.5 feet in diameter. So, I mean, let's face it, it's a way to get a very, very hard problem done here. Uh, two things to get to, and then I'm going to sign off and eat. I'm exhausted, friends. Uh, Freebeacon.com. Feds spend $143,002 for Latina women to talk about their weight with their daughters. Yes, this is your tax dollars hard at work as we get the one of two dumdies today. I don't have the dumdie music set up. I'll see if I can get to it for the last part here. But basically, this is where your tax dollars are going for you, friends. This is exactly... I can't get it up in time. I can't get it up. Um... $143,000, friends. The National Institute of Health is spending nearly $150,000 to facilitate conversations with obese Latina women because of their weight problems with their daughters. And to make a long story short, Latinas are gas. I didn't say this. Seems it seems racist to me, and I think most things that are the people call racist aren't. And then you've got this tripe, and it's as racist as can be, that Latinos have a higher level of obesity. Well, let me tell you what. Um, this is to the assistant professor at the University of San Diego. How about telling Latinas and everybody else, quit stuffing your freaking face, eat some fruits and vegetables, and you won't be fat. Really, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. You don't have to be the person that inv invented the inflatable home to figure this out. And that brings us to the last dumdy of the day, going out to all of these social justice warriors. I never thought I'd be sticking up for uh, the talentless Justin Bieber, but I am. He's accused of appropriating black culture because he's wearing dreadlocks. From the independent.co.uk. Now, we've covered this on uh, the Dunce Cap of the Month, for those of you that want to see it. While it is true that black people in Africa and the Caribbean nations created dreadlocks, separate from that, Unrelate without them even knowing each other, the Vikings, who the last time I checked were pretty damn white, also created dreadlocks. Why do you think um, pirates of the Caribbean have dreadlocks? Why pirates typically had dreadlocks? I do believe Eric the Red had his beard dreaded. This is not appropriation of culture. But even if it was, if you bring us somebody with no talent like Drake, then wouldn't you expect? who's black, wouldn't you expect somebody who has no talent like Justin Bieber, who is white, to appropriate the culture of the non-talented black man? And vice versa. You have crap like Nickelback coming out with absolutely no musical worth whatsoever, then it stands to reason that other people are going to come out sounding like the Nickelback with no talent whatsoever. Justin Bieber has stirred controversy with his new dreadlocks, with fans calling him out for cultural appropriation. He's got absolutely no talent. He can't sing without an auto-tuner. He can't write music. He is nothing but a pretty boy with muscles, and you attack his dreadlocks. I'm sorry I'm sticking up for the little queer here. I really am. People are annoyed because when black people wear the style, they are stereotyped as druggies and unkept. Okay, well, that's awesome. So what you're going to do then is make it so that you're creating the separatist culture that most people accuse uh, white people of wanting. Because what you're going to end up with now is black people getting harassed for marrying a Metallica t-shirt. Ridiculous. This is a slippery slope that is nothing but divide-and-conquer politics at its best. And if you dumb people down enough that all they care about is Justin Bieber's dreadlocks, then maybe an entire state won't care that you stole their damn vote. You know, like Colorado. Thank you for listening, friends. Good night. God bless. I'll be on here ever so quickly tomorrow to give you the updates of how they stole uh, what the coming win from Trump. We've got more primaries tomorrow. Please donate if you can. The correct view is at Hotmail.com. I'll let you know where to send any donations you have because every donation goes towards a better show. Good night, friends. God bless.